Warwickshire Horse Watch is a partnership scheme running between Warwickshire Police and horse owners in the county. It's free to join and its purposes are to deal with equine crime as well as rural crime in general. Anybody can be a member of Warwickshire Horse Watch. You don't have to own a horse or a farm or for that matter live in Warwickshire. We just want to help as many people as possible know how to protect their property and their animals. For more information visit our website at www.warwickshire-horsewatch.co.uk There's lots of up-to-date information and it also shows you how you can join us and become a member. There are two main aims of Warwickshire Horse Watch. That's crime awareness, which we deal with by sending out community alert messages, Twitter messages and through messages on our website. We also deal with crime prevention. We're going to hand you over now to Mr Mark English, who is our crime prevention expert. My name is Mark English, I'm a Crime Prevention Design Advisor with Warwickshire Police. This section of the DVD is looking at uh, secure fencing and gating. Behind me you can see some fencing. It's good quality fencing. It ensures that your horses are kept safe, stops them from wandering, getting onto roads, being involved in an accident and you're getting expensive vet bills. If you've got a vulnerable area, consider putting fence panels on the outside with pricker strips along the top. Again, it's a good deterrent. Gates which you use must have inverted hinges uh, to ensure they can't be lifted and make sure you use good quality chains and locks, again a good visual deterrent. What I would also ask you to consider is putting up appropriate signage at the entrance to the stables area. If you can't see the horses, put up a rural watch sign, however if it's clear that it's the stables, inform them that you are a member of Horse Watch. Also, your sign should include the fact that all of your property is security marked. A good visual deterrent and they'll go elsewhere. I want to talk briefly about tack rooms and feed rooms. A lot of places actually advertise what's in there by putting a sign up saying tack room. Don't do this because obviously it lets the uh, offender know exactly what's in there so he can target that room. What I would consider is grilling your windows because they are quite vulnerable and fitting good quality locks. Lighting can be an issue, especially in the winter period, so good PRI lighting, again, will light up the area and show the offender off. Now, wooden tack rooms can be quite vulnerable, so if you've got uh, vulnerable areas, consider putting in metal panel sheets or even grills to make it a lot more secure. Now, if you can afford the budget, I would consider fitting alarms and CCTV. Uh, it can be a standalone alarm system or one that's connected to your phone via uh, sending a text message. North Warwickshire District, like other areas of Warwickshire, are suffering with vehicle crime. A lot of people are leaving their vehicles insecure. Lock them. Also, take your expensive items out of the vehicle, sat-navs, mobile phones and laptops. If you leave them in the vehicle, they'll go. We've also got issues with number plates being stolen. If you contact the local Safer Neighbourhood team, They'll pass on your details to the Neighbourhood Watch and they'll send you out free anti-tamper screws. And that way then your number plate will stay on your vehicle. All horses must have a passport. And I would recommend that wherever you go you take the passport with you as you can be checked. And obviously keep a copy of it. Now what I would recommend is that you take pictures of all the horse, all the freeze marks, and all the markings on it, whether it be the socks or the blaze, so you can prove exactly what the horse looks like if it is stolen. Now, in relation to this horse, you can see behind me, it has been clipped. Um, so again, take pictures of everything, and also take pictures of the horse when it's got its full coat. Tack is stolen on a regular basis, either from vehicles or from stable yards. The problem with tack is, how do you identify it? How do you prove it's yours? It all looks the same. Obviously you've got the leather type uh, saddle and bridle and you've also got the synthetic one. With a leather one you can actually stamp it using a, a stamping kit and it's quite obvious when it goes on it's actually there. With a bridle it actually goes onto the headpiece on the inside. For the synthetic one you can actually uh, mark it up using creed marks so it's quite obvious exactly what's what and you can stamp it on the stirrup piece there. But for both leather and synthetic you can use smart water again if you're going to use smart water put a sticker to show that it is smart water whatever method you use make sure you take photographs of it again it's evidence so if they are stolen you've got something to hand over to the police so when they find it they can identify it and get it back to you the loser horse rugs are another item that's been stolen on a regular basis 
Problem being is, how do you identify it? Who does it belong to? What we're saying is, mark them up so they can actually be identified and returned back to you, the loser. Some rugs on the inside have a label. If you haven't already done so, fill the details in using your postcode or a unique reference number, the freeze band on your horse. You can also overtly mark them using either a permanent marker pen, an oil-based paint, or you can embroider the details on. If you're a member of Horse Watch, you can actually use the Horse Watch label. It's both reflective and waterproof. Again, using a postcode or URN, a freeze band. Whatever system you use, take pictures of it. Again, to prove that it is yours, where you've marked it, and that way then, if it is stolen and it's recovered, we can return it back to you, the loser. Other equipment at stables are also stolen on a regular basis, whether it be jumps, a brush, wheelbarrows, anything of that nature. If it's not marked up, you don't know whose it is. So what we're saying is mark everything. It's a good visual deterrent. You can use Creedmark, a permanent marker pen, or even an oil-based paint. Make sure they're marked up so they can be identified if they are stolen. Other items that are being stolen is the electric fencing equipment, that being the battery and the energizer. Mark them up, good visual deterrent. When they are going to be used, don't leave them out in the open. Make sure they're hidden in a bush, shrub or whatever, out of sight. And also, where you've got the little red light that shines up at night to show that the power or the equipment is working correctly, cover it up. It can be seen from a couple of hundred metres away and your equipment can be found. Horse boxes and trailers are also stolen as well. What you're going to do is ensure that these are secure. If you've got a horse box, alarm it. Use a wheel clamp, anything of that nature. What you could actually paint on the roof is your postcode using an old base paint. That way then it can be identified. Or there are companies on the internet that do sell products you can put onto the roof. That way then if your vehicle is stolen, it can be identified by a police helicopter or in fact from the cameras on the motorway. Now then, when you actually go to shows with your horses, horse box or trailer, this is an ideal place for opportunists to actually commit crime. Because a lot of time, with it being so busy, things are left unattended. Do not leave tack unattended or your horses. Always keep somebody there. If you are going to go away uh, from your horse box to compete, whatever tack you're not using or any equipment, make sure it's locked away and secure. And if you do see anybody acting suspiciously, speak to the organisers, let them know, or if need be, call the police on 101. Thank you.